All right, good day, ladies and gentlemen. All right, I want to share another comment here. Uh, here's another example of somebody that I failed. So first, let's read his comment. Franklin says, there are those who have poor, uh, partook of the Holy Spirit of God and fell. It would be better to have never tasted of this than to partake and fall. Judas failed and lost out one-third of the angels that knew God fell. Once saved is not always saved. Keep striving to be approved as you will receive your reward if you do not tire out. If the righteous are barely saved, what type of person should we be? Well, okay, so let's, I want to address this last comment first. If the righteous are barely saved, what type of person should we be? All right, so we should be perfect. It, uh, there shouldn't really be a dispute about that. We should be absolutely perfect. Of course, none of us are perfect, and that's why we need a Savior. But um, I think uh, here, and if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Okay, I think that's what he might be referring to. All right. Uh, it's sort of a different context. Um, I don't want to get into first. I probably should, but I don't want to get into that. Where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? The ungodly and sinner. It's not saved. All right. So I want to look at this here. Uh, the word righteous. Okay. Because uh, Franklin, he says, uh, if the righteous are barely saved. All right. So what's interesting in the book of John you see the word righteous mentioned four times. Judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment and of righteousness and judgment of righteousness because I go to my father, O righteous father. Okay, it doesn't make anything, it doesn't make any reference to saving righteous people, okay? But here in Luke 5, Jesus says, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And what this means, this word repentance, means to turn from unbelief to belief. Okay? It doesn't mean turn from your sins and you'll be saved. Because we are in this flesh, it is impossible for us to completely turn from sin. Um, this is speaking of belief and the sin of unbelief, if you will. Okay, so what's interesting here, I want to show, I've shown this before, but um, the word repent, you'll see here in the New Testament, it's mentioned 60 times. It's in Matthew, Mark, Luke, but it's not in John. The word repent is not in John. Think about that. So, um, You'll see this a lot. You'll see people saying, oh, you got to repent of your sins. Well, that's not the gospel. Okay, and uh, so Franklin gives his version of the gospel. He says, keep striving to be approved. Okay, keep striving uh, to be approved, then you'll be saved. And this is not in the Bible anywhere, so I can't help explain his point here. Uh and you can't even define keep striving. Keep trying to be a good person. Well, if you keep trying to be a good person, somebody like me is going to screw it up. All right? I'm going to I'm going to fail. I'm not perfect. I can try to be perfect, but I can't be perfect. So where do you draw the line? Well, I made this many mistakes. So I'm not saved. If I make one less mistake, I'm saved. That's not how it works. When you say keep striving to be approved, this is uh, a correlation of wonderful work. So you're depending on yourself. So you're basically saying what Jesus did doesn't matter. Right? Right? You're saying what he did doesn't matter. It's about you. It's not about him. You're saying that Jesus did all this for nothing. And that you got to do.
do wonderful works. You got to keep trying, keep striving. Well, that's not the gospel. In fact, Jesus says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in equity. It's these people that are striving and hoping that they'll be saved because they did good works. All right. And so it's also clarified here. Oh, let's see. What are we saved by? Oh. Huh? For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. Right? So there's this, there's two gospels. There's the true gospel being preached, which is once saved, always saved. And then there's the false gospel of lordship salvation. And lordship salvation says you've got to live uh, for Christ. Like, like what Franklin's saying. And, um, and so essentially you're saving yourself. And what Jesus did doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, there's probably a better definition of lordship salvation. But lordship salvation sounds nice. You're living for Jesus. You're putting Jesus uh, as you, you know, there's a saying, um, if he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. Right? Well, he's not Lord of all. Right? Just as we, I showed you right here in uh, Matthew 7. Then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. So if he never knows you, is he your Lord? Right? And that's exactly what Lordship Salvation is. It's this idea that we've got to live for Jesus, we got to try to be perfect. We got to strive, keep striving to be approved. That's not the gospel, my friend. You need a savior. We all need a savior. None of us are perfect. That's the law. Should have been a great example of that. You you can't keep the law. I whether you're saved or not saved, you can't keep it because you're in this flesh. And it goes back to what I was talking about, the video I made previously about circumcision. Cut off the flesh. And because uh, we can live in the spirit, but uh, the flesh is no good. And because we're in this flesh, we're not perfect. So there's no way to keep this standard. There's no way to define this standard of keep striving. You can't, can't define it. And the gospel is very clear in, in John 3. Right, verse 16, the most famous verse in the whole world, very simple. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall never perish but have everlasting life. All right, so belief. If thou shalt confess the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Believe. He's done the work already he's already done it all and he died on the cross and it was finished so we can rest in him and his finished works it's not about you it's about him and that's the difference between the flesh and the spirit i hope that makes sense if not please uh, give me a follow-up i appreciate the comment franklin